Hello everyone, this is Jamie Starr with the New World News Network. Uh, make sure to subscribe, check the links below, all that other good stuff. So, on this video, I'm going to delve into one of my favorite topics, cultural appropriation. So let me just make a general statement, because sometimes when I would talk on Facebook about cultural appropriation and how nonsensical it is, and in other videos I've illustrated this, that, you know, it's only... They, it only works with this double standard of, you know, anyone else can incorporate anyone else's culture into their lives, but white people cannot. And of course, the end result of this is jellyfish. It make people have such, a, like, first off, the, the people who believe in cultural appropriation are insane. And I don't mean that in like a pop culture, that's crazy type thing. I mean it like they are have serious mental defects. Because first off, they're an immoral person because it's all based on this idea of, you know, Beyonce can wear a bindi dot because she's black and she can just incorporate. Katy Perry can't dress like an Egyptian because I believe this fake reality that all Egypt was black people and that means Katy Perry is stealing. Like, there's this imagined uh, wrongful intent, basically. And it's so funny because it's everything that black people, get, certain black people get accused of, they do tenfold to everyone else. So I would try to tell people cultural appropriation isn't real. And people tell me, it is real, it is real, it is real. Well, here, here's a hint for you. If you got to debate if something's real, it's not. Then just use that for a rule of thumb. Now, I know people would like to take that and apply that to God and religion. That's a different topic. But let me put it like this. See this? This is a golf ball. I don't have to convince you it's real. I can throw it at your fucking face and you'll know. Cultural appropriation. Not real. You can't, you can't just, you can't go to me and say, oh, well, when Justin Timberlake does an R&B song, he's stealing from black people and not giving them credit no matter how much he says he's influenced by them or anything like that i mean i watched a whole documentary on this where they say in the beginning 90 percent of white artists admit that they are influenced by black musicians and then the whole rest of the thing is a bunch of black people whining about racism and how it's so racist and that's how i'm going to say it from now on because this is baby shit it's racism it's not racism and i thank atheism for uh, is unstoppable for making there a differentiation between the two and that's what we need to do we need to start making our own terms, our own language, because that's what the left does with everything. So all of this, oh, well, we just want our credit. Yeah, you should have saw the first fucking seconds of the documentary you're in, because it's laid out perfectly for you. But again, you're dealing with mentally defective people who can't, they, they are, they excel at holding opposite ideas at the same time you know like the school system's a great example of this we send our kids through this 12-year system of unifying them and making them one and making them all the same and stripping away their individuality while telling them in the same breath you're all special you're all unique you're all individuals but we're running you through this process to homogenize you it makes no sense but anyway so Vic Mensa, which God knows who he is, joins the night, nightly show crew to dissect Justin Timberlake's cultural appropriation. And they didn't dissect anything. But back to the jellyfish thing. As a music producer, and this based on these videos where, you know, black people invented everything, they're responsible for everything, they're the greatest, most superior race in the world, and no one can do anything without them, but somehow they're stuck under the thumb of the fucking cave beast, uh, you know, moronic white man. It, again, it makes no sense, it makes no sense whatsoever that these people are such geniuses and responsible for everything, but they just end up under the control of the racist, white supremacist all the time. Um, and, and I'm so sick of this shit. Um, so, Jesse Williams gave a speech basically saying, you better be a yes man or shut, da shut up. You better agree with me or don't say anything. That's the attitude, of course. And if you're white, you know, you don't even have an opinion. And that's what this guy said. You know what Justin Timberlake said? Hashtag inspired. 
And this is, this is the proof in a nutshell that you can't agree with them, you can't disagree with them, you can't do anything. You just better sit down and shut up because you're superior, obviously. I mean, where is the logic in this? And I try to tell this to people. When you come to me and say, Katy Perry is allowed to be criticized for her cultural appropriations, Beyonce is not. Okay, I'll, I'll go with you on that. Now you explain to me how Katy Perry is superior and Beyonce isn't when Katy Perry is subject to criticism and Beyonce is not. It would seem as if Beyonce, being uncriticizable, or if that's even a word, is the superior one. But, again, we're not thinking. You're mentally defective. The things don't add up. You're just a drone that is regurgitating rhetoric. So, let's get to this video. Your content will resume shortly. Sorry for this little wait. Oh, we got an ad coming to us. Stack the troll, save the stack world. Will you look at that? I wish there was a skip button. Whoa, 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 man, whoa, we can smell whoa. the bland snacks all over you. Well, anyway, like I was saying about the jellyfish thing, you know, if if there was a world where people, you know, took this cultural appropriation idea seriously with music and, you know, the claims that are made by people, it would basically be I would sit at my computer and I would be like, you know, like I said in my one video, how everyone should just go, home Africa, before any and everything, just to, so no, everyone will know we're paying homage and respect to the almighty Africa. But I mean, if we didn't do that, I would sit there at the keyboard and I'd be like, all right, I'm going to make a beat. All right, let me use a shaker sound. Sh -sh -sh -sh. Oh, wait, black people invented this. I can't use this. I'm taking this from them. I'm appropriating their culture. Oh, well, what can I use? I'll use a guitar. All right. Bam, bam. Oh, no, I can't do that. An African might have invented a guitar. Well, I, I don't want to appropriate that, so I can't do that. Oh, here's a drum. Rhythm. Black people have rhythm. White people don't. I can't have a rhythm in my song. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, I'll just make classical music. <laughs> Violin. Uh, uh. Oh, wait. Gazi fucking Black Hitler said that black people invented classical music. I can't do this anyway. I'm not going to do anything, a jellyfish. That jellyfish. And that's what's gonna that's what they want. They just want you to be so paranoid and so mentally overwhelmed with the idea that you're doing something wrong that might offend a racist that you don't do anything. And you can take that superiority of yours and just go off in a corner somewhere and shut up. And that's what they want. I mean this this speech says that explicitly, so Let's let's get to these morons. Jesse Williams gave an electrifying speech. Take a look. And we're done watching and waiting while this invention called whiteness uses and abuses us, burying black people out of sight and out of mind while extracting our culture, our dollars, our entertainment like oil, black gold. Yeah. Liam, let me just ask a question. Did he say anything? And this is what I'm getting really sick of. The fact that, and it, you know, commercials nowadays are like this, where commercials used to be about selling a product, like identifying what it is, how it works, how you use it, why you would use it, what benefit. I mean, these people have mastered, mastered the art of saying so much and not saying anything. Because when you really delve into all of what they're saying, like there's a lot to unpack there. This invention called whiteness. Okay, well, who invented it? Well, politicians make us identify by these terms. White people don't. In fact, most, I mean, white people have actually had their culture, while everyone wants to claim their culture as the dominant culture, they will claim the homogenized white culture is. We're not talking about Eng English, Irish, British, Scottish, German, you know, actual cultures 
but the homogenized ones. So this invention of whiteness. Okay, it's if it's an it's, 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 it's invention, I can't even talk. Oh my God. If it's an invention, then who then is using it to extrapolate and everything? I mean, some would say that Vic Mensa is using the white person's entertainment industry and structure to extrapolate money for himself. We don't mind that. We don't mind when Oprah makes a billion off the white man's infrastructure. And I mean, the other idea is, okay, well, let's give you your black utopia. And now white people will not buy black products. Oh, you don't want that. You don't want that because then you'd all end up broke because we all know black people aren't that great at supporting one another. Trust me, I've been in large hip hop groups and there was a core four members of us two white guys and two black guys that worked together. We were brothers. We were like family. We were together every day because we all were able to put ourselves on the back burner for the group goals. And we all understood that if we achieved the group goals, it would benefit all of us. I mean, I was case in point because I wasn't even a performer in the group. I was the producer. I was a producer i strategized some of the marketing i mean i really was like behind the scenes but they always kept bringing me to the forefront i would do the radio interviews and all sorts of stuff like that because i could handle it and they knew i knew how to put across the points we were trying to make in the most commercialized mainstream friendly manner i was very good at verbalizing all that stuff I, but, you know, that's why they chose me to perform at the big sold-out shows with them doing the hype man stuff and things that we had, 10 other people that could have done. I got to do it because I had a better work ethic, because I was actually a team player. Everyone else was just in it for their own gain, and that's where it all fell apart. Not that this doesn't happen with large groups of white people. I've had it happen in bands, too, and everything like that. But this is, again, a, a problem that gets talked about within the black community. Anyway... We'll we'll let this continue. Yeah. Hey. We dropped, we dropped the popcorn mics. And during the show, Justin Timberlake tweeted that he was inspired. And then he got trolled by somebody who was a little sensitive during that moment on Twitter. And Timberlake responded with this tweet. All right. And then Twitter just really lost its mind. Yeah. People thought he was being condescending or blah, blah, blah. Why do you think there was such a big reaction to this reaction? Okay. So I feel as if... Because a white person commented on a black person speaking. That's, that's all there is to it. I mean, and that's, this is the whole craziness of the racism problem. Is that it's a problem if a white person offers an opinion. The superior one in this circumstance. The, the, the superior people in power. How is it they're always getting in trouble for doing things that are just normal. I mean, again, there's a, a disconnect here. The issue is not Justin Timberlake having an input or even appreciating what was said in the speech. No, the issue is because he said hashtag inspired and everyone got their panties in a bunch. I mean, I, I, I honestly feel like these people, like, what, what response do they want? Him to just be like, time to lynch someone like if they if someone said that i feel like that would actually throw these people for a loop like but if someone agrees and they're like oh this is inspiring you're evil for because you're inspired and you're white and this is a black thing and we're having our black moment on our black twitter and in our black world because we need this world because everyone else is racist i mean that's something that everybody most people can resonate with right our problem here our problem here is that Justin Timberlake himself, you know, is definitely benefiting from using black culture for his sound, his dance moves, his dancers, and blowing up off of it. But if you roll down Justin... T I would not... First of all, I would not consider NSYNC black culture. At what point did Justin Timberlake become black cult? Oh, oh, when Timberland and Pharrell, two black guys who are multimillionaires, who make millions off of music, started working with him. Now, you notice 
the, uh, there's a song on Timberlake's last album, uh, Get Off the Wall or something like that, that has an Arabic sample in it. No one complains that he's appropriating Arabic sounds for his music. No, no, it's, it's a black culture thing. And it doesn't matter that there's a black man, like, r rambling, running his mouth, just with little, like, yeah, bringing sexy back, yeah. I mean, Timberland is all over it. They're like a goddamn tag team when it comes to the music they make. And they make amazing music. I mean, and can you think about this? This is a group of people that want to deny Justin Timberlake the ability to express his artistry because they want him so paranoid that someone might get offended that you used a shaker sound that someone in a hut in Africa has as well. I mean... When I'm supreme commander and dictator, there will be no room for any of this nonsense. These are thir for, uh, bleh, first world problems to the umpteenth degree. I mean, I, I look at the fact that this stuff even gets talked about, and it's like, you can tell you have no real issues when you have to talk about imaginary issues, about the imaginary rules that you want to place on society. This is how authoritarianism breeds, with people wanting to make these arbitrary rules where it's like, well, this group can do this, and this group can't do this, and this group can't do this, and then the same breath they'll say, I'm for individual liberty. And I, it's it's amazing. I mean, oh, I like if you if anyone saw Ben Shapiro and Sally Cohen's debate, uh, it was absolutely astounding how this woman would be like, "I'm for individual liberty." So if a Jew, a Muslim, and a Christian all walked into a hotel, you would deny them all. And Ben's like, "Yeah, you have the liberty to deny them all." <gasps> how dare you? And it's like it says the person who just said they were for individual liberty. Yeah, right. Timberlake's Twitter for the past two years, which I just did, you see nothing that supports black people when it's more difficult, when there's a struggle. You didn't see Justin Timberlake sucking any black dick on Twitter, so he doesn't appreciate black people enough, otherwise he'd have their fucking j dick down his throat. You know, with everything that's going on and everybody that's been killed by police on camera in the past couple of years, there's no hashtag Black Lives Matter, there's no praying for Baltimore, right. there's no praying for Flint you know because that's a dangerous subject for him to touch and it is not a dangerous subject for him to oh yeah it is a dangerous subject because you're damned if you do damned if you don't and maybe that's why he didn't touch it because maybe even if you just come out and say that you're inspired by someone's speech everyone's going to get their panties in a bunch and fucking accuse you of the ultimate sin of racism and we're not feeling him being down when it's beneficial to him and being down with what be your Didn't cult you like was, uh... i mean again let's uh, what these people say i mean they don't even know what they're saying but down with what down with what your fucking black power cult i mean really I feel like that was the, the underlying feeling with that kind of battle that was going on because because Jesse's speech had a lot of that in there about cultural appropriation. Yes, and it was really powerful, right. you know? And I think, you know, part of it, Justin just caught black people at a bad moment. Like, we, <laughs> we were so hyped off that speech. We had never heard anything like that. It was like, when I went to go see 12 Years it's a like, Slave. It's like, it's the BET Awards. We didn't know white people were watching. No, no, they weren't. <laughs> but it was like, when I went to go see 12 Years a Slave. I really feel like if someone, and Bernie Sanders has basically done this, if someone just came out and was like, uh, black people have it hard, black people in the hood, socioeconomic, black people in prison, black people I care about you, the struggle, the struggle is real, my people is real, the struggle. If you ain't with the struggle, you without the struggle, and you without the struggle, you without me and blackness and they'd be like oh my god it's so profound it's so it speaks to my heart and it's like they didn't say anything they didn't say anything at all they used a bunch of fluffy emotional words and just said black people black people a lot i mean that was obama's fucking campaigns if anyone missed it it's bernie sanders campaign if anyone missed it and they're not saying anything there's no specifics there's no anything because the moment you delve into the specifics 
all their complaints start to wither away and their enemy becomes someone different. It, it suddenly doesn't become this vague, imaginary, oh, well, it's white people, it's white privilege, it's in the ether. It's the conspiracies dwindle away and you start to say, oh, it's all the politicians that have been coming to you saying, black people, socioeconomic, I'm here for you, I'll help you, my brothers. And it's all of them. They're causing all of the problems for it because they're meddling in your lives. And then you want to blame everyone else for all of your issues. If I left the movie theater, a white man opened the door and I was like, too little, too late, sir. <laughs> this, is, this is the other thing. And this is why I say first world problems. Because let's just look at this. You know, if you're having a serious debate with someone and you're like, oh, well, you know, the issue is facing the black community. But slavery, slavery, my brother, look at 12 years of slave. I mean, they'll point to a movie as if it's historically accurate and if it's not dramatized for the sake of selling a movie. But then you see this woman, she'll, too little, too late. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. <laughs> I made a slavery joke. Okay, so the one thing you want to hold above everyone's heads as the original sin of America you then want to crack jokes about and I know they'll say oh well, we just joke because that's how we handle the pain of our blah 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 no it's obviously not an issue if we're gonna sit here and all joke and smile about it. like look at them yeah <laughs> too little too late fuck them crackers <laughs> first world problems first world problems are not even worth discussing Back to the moron squad. Come on, guys. Oh, man. Why is the play button not working for me here? <sighs> Sorry about this, everyone. Hopefully we don't have to deal with another advertisement. But yeah, this whole, I mean, nothing bothers me more than this whole cultural appropriation thing. I mean, all of my nieces and nephews are all mixed. And I mean, you know, one is blonde haired, blue eyes, and she's in fact half Puerto Rican. You know, the other two, one's half Jamaican. And all I can think, and I've said this countless times, what sort of world are we creating for these children who you'd look at and say okay well they're a physical representation that these problems are behind us that you know the races are merging together and just we're all loving each other as people and everything like that and then i look at these things about cultural appropriation and i just think what sort of world are we creating for these kids that are not, you know, black or white or, you know, Mexican or Puerto Rican or, you know, but they are mixes of everything and mixes of things are beautiful. Like, when is it not? Like, I've never heard, you know, that two styles of music blended together and then be like, oh, that's so awful. Or, you know, people doing mixed media art and people, again, have, oh my God, can you believe this? They mixed, you know acrylics with oil oh you know it's just so stupid and it shows you who's the person with a racial issue okay so i feel as if the issue is not justin timberlake having an input or even appreciating what was said in the speech i mean that's something that everybody most people can resonate with right our problem here our problem here is that justin timberlake himself you know is definitely benefiting from using black culture according to people though blacks invented everything so you can't do anything without uh, being guilty of this and this is the problem with the whole whole concept is you're always guilty because you are white you know, with everything that's going these on. guys want to they want to sugarcoat it and make it sound like they're not crazy racist supremacists and everything else but they are this is the thing with any leftist argument the moment you follow it to the next logical place it starts to seem really fucking crazy like i said he's basically explaining the jellyfish concept 
You know, even I've heard, I saw one again, the Sally Cohen Ben Shapiro debate. She says, you know, you can't call people illegal aliens because that's so dehumanizing of them. Okay, so let's stop calling rapists rapists because that's dehumanizing of them. I mean, they just broke a law. A Why should we call them something different? Yes, and it was really powerful, right. you know, and I think. You know, part of it, Justin just caught black people at a bad moment. Like, we <laughs> we were so hyped off that speech. We had never heard anything like that. It was like when I went to go see 12 Years of Slave. It's like, it's the BET Awards. We didn't know white people were watching. No, 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 they weren't. <laughs> but, I mean, like, when I went to go see 12 Years of Slave, I left the movie theater, a white man opened the door, and I was like, too little, too late, sir. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> you just get hyped. Right. And you feel so right, but no, that happened you know to me with Wolf of Wall Street, by the way. Yeah. I fi fired two stockbrokers after that yeah. movie. Not the, not the same. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. the same. Just trying to relate. Yeah. Sorry, not just trying same. to relate. No, that's fair. No, but I think, you know, it was his follow-up tweet where he said, we're all the same. Mm -hmm. Just after Jesse had said, we're not being treated the same. Right. You know, it's like, you can't all lives matter us and then also be inspired by his speech, mm -hmm. you know? Do you feel like th that's a feeling that's out there right now? Because his speech had a lot of different aspects of it, but the culture appropriations part, did it feel like that was just a Twitter beef, or that's a real feeling that's out there right now? I mean, Twitter oh, is just representing what people are thinking. That's, that's where we can stream of consciousness, express ourselves. People are tired at, at this right. point of just being used. Is there any part of black culture? Used? That's for what? Most, Most of you are useless. Just, I'm just trying to help Rory out. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like, for Timberlake, just being a white guy and trying to get involved in this is a mistake. I'm learning yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, see, and that's the whole thing. Like you said, being a white guy and trying to get involved is the mistake. And they all laugh at it, but that's true. And the, the, again, the idea that you're superior, but if you even do anything, you're at fault. Doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Fuck. I should just let this play through. I don't know why. Oh, it's just representing what people are thinking. That's that's where we can stream of consciousness, express ourselves. People are tired at, at this right. point of just being used. Is there any part of black culture that seems safe to appropriate, and some that doesn't? Just I'm just trying to help Rory out. Like, is there yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'd be like for Timberlake, just being a white guy and trying to get involved in this is a mistake. I'm learning that <laughs> immediately. Um, no, I think that the thing that to me it makes perfect sense is like. The black community has been ostracized since the beginning of time in this country, obviously, and, and uh, we've not invited them to the party the entire time, and they've created their own world, their own culture, and all these things that they had to do because they weren't invited. And we have not invited them to the party, yet they are the group that creates our culture. How does that happen? How they've created these awesome things within that culture, and we're like, oh, we'll take that, we'll take that. Right. And, and it's like, no. You. Like, you can't take the good right. and ignore us on every other right. issue. Like, I totally get why people were pissed about that. But when does, when does appropriation stop, and when does something just become part of the culture? Because there's a lot of young white kids who that's all they know. That's the that's music just, yeah. and the culture that they... Oh, at what point are we going to stop segregating? That, that's, the, that's the fucking serious question. I mean, let me tell you what, 10 years ago, this con these conversations didn't take place. Cultural appropriation is neo-segregationism. That's all it is. No, they don't see it as appropriation. But they don't want to appropriate the voter suppression and predatory right, loans and job discrimination. Yeah. You don't want to appropriate right. that. Predatory loans. All right. Let's let me just delve into this one real quick with without needing to do anything. When you go into a bank and you ask them for money, they give you a contract. You can read the contract. In fact, I encourage you to read every contract you put your name onto. Now, there are some predatory things, like there are contracts and a legal fiction that's set up in your name before you're even allowed to, or even, not even allowed, before you can even walk or talk. You're entered into predatory contracts as an infant. Uh, you know, things involving your social security, your birth certificates, vaccines, all of that stuff predatory when you walk into a bank and you ask them for money and then they fucking jip you on percentage rates and interest rates and you're too dumb to realize what you signed your name on that's a personal problem that you're stupid so wipe that one off the list <laughs> right. 
It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's, um... <laughs> then it's, again, though, let's remember, on the leftist, personal responsibility doesn't, is, is non-existent. There is no personal agency. Everyone is just a drone being led around by the society. I mean, it's a group, and this is why they're so big on social engineering, because they already view the world as everyone is just waiting to be social engineered, and that they can engineer it in the perfect utopia. It's like a selective appropriation. Absolutely. It's like selecting the things but that are... Want to but they're not appropriate. Oh, my God. This is the whole problem, is that they're not appropriating. They're just listening to a rap song and singing along with it. They're just making chicken with fucking, you know, breadcrumbs and throwing it in a pan and frying it. They're not, you know, you should not have every move you make and then have to say, oh, well, what was the skin color of the first person who ever did this? Home Africa. You're back to being a jellyfish. Right. Well, <laughs> either you're in or you're out. Right. You know what I mean? You can't like take okay, what okay, you like. That's and, when he you also know. talked about critique. And I want to show this other part of his speech uh, that, that Jesse was talking about. Can we show that real quick? If you have a critique for the resistance, for our resistance, then you better have an established record of critique of our oppression. If you have no interest... Although, if the critique is, you're not oppressed, look around you at reality, well, that's when they'll just say, sit down and shut up. I mean, this is this is him just basically saying, you better be a yes man, because if you're not a yes man, then you're a racist. If you have no interest in equal rights for black people, then do not make suggestions to those who do. Sit equal rights was established in the 60s. These people, you ever hear the U2 song, Stuck in a Moment? That's what they are. Down. I mean, I tell people this all the time when they're like, oh, we're so oppressed, and I'm like... Do you realize that through the same device you are talking to me with right now, that you can establish a global business and be working for yourself as your own boss, no system of supremacy in the wet way, right now, rather than arguing online, you could start a business. You could do it right at your computer. You could produce a whole album. You have more opportunity at your fucking fingertips than any slave could have ever imagined. And you honestly want to talk to me about oppression. And also, you're the shit you, I'm telling you that's giving you all this opportunity was built in the third world by a slave. <gasps> oh my God, see, now we have an issue. Because all of your opportunity as a Western black person is at the expense of slavery. Talk about irony, right? He was keeping it a thousand. Yeah, he was. No, he no. wasn't. Like, sit like, down until no, you <laughs> show us that you care. Don't, don't give us uh, any, right. don't tell us. So agree with me or sit down. You're in the cult or you're out. That's it. No, but no. the truth is, it's like, no, you don't have to tweet that, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. He could have said everything he was inspired about, right. and then we'd have been cool. Right. <laughs> well, I think that, ironically, uh, one of the, the mediums that serve to divide with appropriation music, I think, is the same medium that can help bring us together, because music is one of right. the forces mm -hmm. that does bring a lot of people Absolutely. together. And here's what I'm talking about. Music brings people together, except if you're appropriating, then we're going to use it to divide. So the, the, I bet, oh my God, I can't, I can't even. I can, I, there is such a disconnect with saying those two things where he's like, music brings people together, but when they do it in a way that brings people together, we're going to say that they're evil racist appropriators and we're going to div divide. Oh my God. So fuck, can we get rid of these people? Can we just, I mean, the, the society, we, the, it's the only way we're going to save society is by having zero tolerance for this stuff. You're, in, I mean, I, you know, everything I want to say, I'm having a moral hang-up on where it's like, these people should be no platform. These people need to, I mean, because the whole problem is, is they're not having, it's not like the normal, like, oh, yeah, we'll let a racist white supremacist talk because they'll expose themselves as the morons they are. These people are doing it in this way with such eloquence and big words and not really saying anything and people just agree with it. And then they have this attitude, well, you either agree with us or sit down and shut up. And it, this, letting them talk doesn't expose it. It doesn't work. And how do you stop this? Someone, please tell me, 
how do we stop this shit? I would really love to know because I would try and do whatever I could to help it. But there really needs to be a stop to all this shit. And a stop to these people making these moronic statements and then contradicting it two seconds later. If you are so stupid that you will say one thing and then negate it in the same breath, I, I just, there's no room for you in mainstream political discourse and conversations like this. You should not have platforms this large if you are that stupid. And this guy, the, the main host of the show, he's not stupid. I've seen him on at the uh, press correspondence dinner. He was amazing. But this is ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. And it bothers me so much because, like I said, God forbid we had a world where these people were running it and every time I had to sit down and make a beat, I had to fucking think about Africa every two seconds and base all my decisions off of someone and their fucking African superiority complex. It's fucking ridiculous. So... That's this video. I can't say anything more about it because I'm just going to start yelling. And this shit is so aggravating. And I, it pisses me off because music is one of the things that is, have always brought joy into my life. But I will tell you that all through growing up as a musician, you're always told, oh, you have white rhythm. You have this. There's a, a you know, bowing to blackness every other time I would turn around and a putting down of white people. And then these people get all hung up over the shit acting like that's not how it is so fuck subscribe to my shit i hope you like it fuck you if you don't